Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. What do you got? What do you got? Deputy of Detention. Well, Karametra's Blessing going to do its job. Goes after Ginger Brew. We will Karametra's Blessing Ginger Brew. Fizzle it. Opponent could have sacked a Bosleum Wander, but you got to be confident in those scenarios. If you cast it confidently, sometimes it goes through. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's Seth. Probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. And this week, we are heading back to Modern for a deck that is not only sweet, but it is super cheap, ultra budget, I would say. $61, 9 ticks. This is Mono White Auras, a deck that's aggressive, but also looking to draw an absurd amount of cards with newly cheap <laughs> Core Spirit Dazzler, thanks to a Jumpstart reprint. So basically, throwing auras on things, ginger brooding, drawing cards, attacking, all in the ultra budget play trade. So let's talk about the deck, jump right into the game, starting with well, the cards that are really the core of the deck. Core Spirit Dazzler, <laughs> the core of the deck, and uh, from Senior Edificer. Sorry, I, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. Uh, these cards Essentially, whenever we cast an aura, we get to draw a card. Our deck is full of auras, so once we get them on the battlefield, we can draw a ton of cards. Srom isn't very good at attacking, just a 2-2. Two, two. Core Spear Dancer, on the other hand, it gets massive. Every aura on it gives it plus 2, plus 2. So not only is it one of our main card advantage engines, it's also one of our best beaters, especially if we can protect it. So that's our card advantage engine. As far as the rest of our creatures, Ginger Brew, super evasion, only blocked by haste creatures if we play a mana. So if we can make it big with auras, it is a really good way to close out games, even through blockers. And then we have Elson of Life's Bounty, which kind of does double duty. Occasionally, we do load it up with auras. It has lifelink, so that's kind of nice against aggro. But more importantly, it joins Karametra's Blessing as a way to protect our Spirit Dancers, Sroms, Ginger Brutes, our better creatures from removal, because we can pay one mana, sack it, give our creature or an enchantment protection from whatever color. Karametra's Blessing is insane as well, not only giving hexproof and maybe plus plus two plus two, but also making the creature indestructible as long as it is either an enchantment creature like Elsid or enchanted, which most of our creatures should be. So that's a way that we not only beat targeted removal, but because of indestructibility also beats Wrath as well, which is really key against control deck. So those are our creatures. That's our card advantage engine. Next, we have a million auras. So aura wise, our most aggressive and probably most important auras, honestly, are ethereal armor, all that glitters. Each give the enchanted creature plus one plus one for each enchantment we control. Like, all that glitters also hits on artifacts, which is kind of relevant with Ginger Brute, but really, they're very similar. So, idea is, we play all these auras, we play an ethereal armor, all that glitters are two, and all of a sudden, we have one creature that's like a 10-10, or a 12-12, and can win in just a couple attacks. Core Spirit Dancer gets super big with these auras, because it pumps itself as well. Of course, Ginger Brute evasive, so that's another good target. Then, we have our evasion enchantments. So if we're going all in on Ginger Brew, we don't need these too much, but if we're going in on a uh, Core Spirit Dancer, Elsid, Sram, something like that, Griff Spoon gives flying. Uh, Spirit Mantle, protection from creatures, essentially just making our creatures unblockable, because one of the risks is we build this massive like Core Spirit Dancer, let's say, with all these Ethereal Armors and all these all the Glitters, but our opponent can just keep chump blocking, chump blocking, chump blocking. Griss Mood, Spirit Mantle, hopefully takes that option off the table, and lets us make sure that we can get through our attacks, even through blockers. Otherwise, we have what I would consider kind of our utility auras, and really, all of our auras are important, because they trigger our Spirit Dancers and SROM, so Worst case, as long as we have a SROM or a Spirit Dancer, these are all drawing us cards, but cantripping, cycling, churning through our deck, finding us more pieces. So even our bad auras are not that bad because they draw us cards. But Hyena Umbra, Totem Armor is another form of protection. If we have a Totem Armor on a creature and the creature would die, instead we just lose the aura. So Hyena Umbra, another way to protect our creatures against Wrath, target removal, plus plus one, plus one in first strike, not the end of the world. Cartouche makes a token when it comes into play. So mostly here to fight against like Liliana the Veil, other edict effects, Spirit Link, Kind of like a lifelink. Essentially, it is lifelink, but it's a triggered ability version, which means if we are going on Elsid, which has lifelink, we actually need twice as much life because we're not technically giving the creature lifelink. Otherwise, it basically works like lifelink for the most part. So a way we could gain some life against aggro. Otherwise, on thin ice, 
It's our path to exile, except it's also an aura, so it triggers our Srob, triggers our core spirit adds our mana base, bunch of snow covered planes because we have on thin ice, we use snow covered planes, castle art veil to make tokens, sideboard wise, we get a few other pieces that are kind of key to our deck, and then we have some just hate cards. So, Burnton Forge Tender, pro red, really good against aggro decks. Uh, we can load it up with auras, also can sacrifice it to fizzle a bird spell, so protection against lightning bolt decks. Mirror Crusader, protection from green and black, and double strike, great against like, uh, green black mid-range style decks if our opponent's on fatal push is a removal this could just run our opponent over Karametra's blessing for removal heavy matchups more protection on the dice for removal a bunch of spirit links for aggro dabbing sphere for tron in combo torbot script for graveyard and that is mono white auras ultra budget mono white auras for modern that's our budget magic deck for this week let's jump into some games see this deck in action thanks so much for watching i hope you'll enjoy it and i will talk to you soon Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over at cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you go to check out. All right, budget magic time. Actually, ultra budget magic time. We are playing mono white auras in modern. And this sounds okay. We don't have any of our big card draw creatures, but we do have... A creature and auras and we can always draw into a uh, card well, there's SRAM all right well play Elzid well now our main goal is gonna be protecting SRAM and drawing lots of cards until our opponent uh oh hmm gemstone mine usually means unfair things are happening okay it's dredge interesting 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 million blood gas and a prize amalgam ah uh, this might change our plans Ooh. all right snow covered planes it does not change our plans we're gonna play spirit dancer get in for one and i think we're racing i think we're racing hit our opponent yeah so opponent's gonna get back a huge board we are gonna try to build a huge spirit dancer and kill our opponent oh no is this another cathartic reunion <gasps> oh boy all right this could be bad this could be really bad dredges dredges wow opponent's gonna have an insane board all right dredges 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 well, we'll see. We'll see if it's fast enough. Wow, they don't have the land. Okay. Well, play the land. That's good news. We get to play Ethereal Armor Draw Card. We get to play Ethereal Armor Draw Card. We get to play Griff Spoon Draw Card. Go to combat. Hit ya. All right. Well, can you deal with a 15-16 dredge opponent? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is safe. We could have left up Elsid, but I think if they have removal, it's Lightning Axe, and there's no way they're going <laughs> to be able to Lightning Axe a Spear Dancer. And I think this means we're fast enough. I don't think our opponent can get out of this. I mean, that is that is a power core Spear Dancer. <laughs> Newly cheap thanks to Jumpstart, partly. All right, opponent gets back all their stuff. Yeah, sure, fine. I mean, opponent, do your thing. I'm just not sure. So I guess, I guess if they can like dredge Narc Amoebas, they are going to need multiple Narc. Wow, they have another Cathartic Reunion. Creeping Chill to gain some life. I wonder if they even have Narc Amoebas. They might not. And they, if they do, they didn't hit any. They might be playing Silver Smotes over Narc Amoebas. And all right, well, uh, gotcha. <laughs> didn't do anything special that our opponent had insane dredging and uh eh, just worked out that's all it took we will bring in the tormod's crypts tempted to bring in the spirit links what are we going down so i think what we go down is we can go down cartouches opponent doesn't have edicts those are mostly for edict matchups evasion is still good can maybe trim a karametra's blessing our opponent does not have that many ways of interacting spirit mantle's fine we can probably trim on thin ice like, just removal is not... Targeted removal is not that good against Dredge. We'll bring in more Spirit Legs. I think one way we can potentially beat Dredge is just... Do what we did that game. Like, even if our opponent builds a big board, do what we did that game, but also uh, give our thing lifelink, and then we just, like, attack for 20, opponent takes us back, whatever. Like, uh, that should win through chump blockers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the big one's Tormod script. Like, that is, that is a big one. All right, on to game two against Dredge. And... Well, okay. Similar to our first hand, we got a good one drop. We don't have graveyard hate. We can give it lifelink and make it big. Question's gonna be, does our opponent have removal? If they can kill the ginger brute, this could go horribly wrong. Opponent plays a land passes. And play a land and let's just 
Ginger brew. Get in for one. Bone it. Down to 19. Bone it cracks. Stomping grounds. Stepped. Yeah. Wonderful ills. And, oh, passes again? All right, opponent's on the slow dredge hand here. Well, untap. Play a land. Play Elsid. Go to combat. Hit ya. Opponent down to 17 past the turn. Is Carmetra's Blessing's pretty good. That can protect the Elsid. Blood crypt tapped. All right. What did our opponent keep? Like a removal hand? Keeping no way to fill the graveyard is interesting. It makes me think they must have kept a bunch of removal spells. Gemstone mine. Wow. All right. Hardcast Silver Smoke. Sure. That is acceptable. Opponent passes. Ooh, there's Spirit Dancer too. Ugh. Well, let's all that glitters, Elsid. Go to combat. Attack for four. Opponent takes it. We go to 24. Opponent goes to 12. Definitely leaving up this Karametra's Blessing this turn. We might be able to do it without without this Spirit Dancer. Is it Lightning Axe time? Lightning Axe. Well, we will. Karametra's Blessing. Do you have another one? No. Okay. Your go, opponent. <laughs> Oh, smote away, smote away. Cathartic Reunion. Oh, boy, that's a, not the best stretch hand I've ever seen, for sure. Can we win this turn? Opponent passes. Snow-covered planes. Well, play snow-covered planes. Play Core Spirit Dancer. Play Spirit Link on Elsid. Draw a card. Play Griff Spoon on Elsid. Draw a card. Go to combat. Attack you for seven and all right opponent well you gotta deal with the elzid or you gotta kill us we are up to a ridiculous life total 38 one of the cool things about spirit lake is it's technically not life link it's a triggered ability that makes a creature gain life all right so opponent managed to deal with elzid sure 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 so opponent's alive sort of kind of maybe shriek or yeah mills themselves it's a creeping chill dredge is gonna have a hard time 42ing us though and we're going to go to uh, to Spirit Dancer Town here in a minute. Actually, maybe we go on Ginger Brew and just try to win that way. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. I think Ethereal Armor plus Griff Spoon would be lethal. Another Shriekhorn. Ponet. Passing. Well, we untap. We draw. Griff Spoon. Well, play Griff Spoon. Draw a card. Th I think this does it. Yep. So we draw. Grow Spirit Dancer. Spirit Leg. On Spirit Dancer, draw a card. Grow it. Yes, please. Uh, Snow-covered planes. Elsid. Just in case. Ethereal armor. And that is a very lethal spirit dancer. And sorry, Dredge. Uh, no, no chance. No chance at all. <laughs> Not even close. Go to combat. Attack you for a million. And that went really well. Really, really well. Opponent scoops it up. Whoa! Well, uh, maybe we're just more unfair than the unfair decks. And so this was an interesting match. In game one, our opponent had a great dredge hand. They dredged half their deck in like three turns. They were like 40 cards deep. So that was a great dredge hand. Game two, I'm not 100% sure why our opponent kept this hand. I guess they had Lightning Axe and a Nature's Claim, and they figured they'd play the control role, but they just got no velocity, which is one of the risks if you bring in a bunch of sideboard cards uh, and keep a hand like that. It's very risky to keep a, a hand that can't fill the graveyard with dredge, and our opponent got punished, but we beat him at full power with a great hand in game one so yeah sweet sweet all right budget magic time we are playing some ultra budget mono white auras in modern and yeah okay only one land but we're on the draw and we have lots of lots of card draw if we get one land sram and core spirit dancer plus some removal yeah, this is fine castle iron veil for our e boon and sure that's not a land. Well, Ginger Brew, get in for one. Well, we do need to hit land number two, or we're going to have a, a bit of a rough go of it. Let's see what our opponent's doing. Could be control. Eh, or taxes. Taxes also seems possible. Stoneforge Mystic. All right. All right, all right, all right. So probably, well, I guess it still could be control. Just a weird, a weird hand of control. Land, please. No. Well, we will on thin ice to get rid of Stoneforge. Mm. Come on, lands! Stoneforge down. Get in for one. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have Ghost Quarter. That would be a blowout. Most matchups, Odd the Dice is fine, but 
If it's mono white, ghost quarter. Okay, it's blue white control. All right, opponent passing. Well, there's a land. Hmm. Well, let's Cartoose Ginger Brew. Okay, sure. Opponent paths. Well, that gives us more lands. Yeah. Oh, opponent. All right. We will uh, Ginger Brew Part 2. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent out of 17. Not the fastest start imaginable. Frantic inventory draws a card. Opponent plays a land and passes. Well, go to combat. Get in with Ginger Brew. Hit our opponent. Play SROM. We're more okay with having SROM die than Spirit Dancer. SROM is like bad Spirit Dancer. Opponent has a counter, sure. Um, yeah, pass the turn. Another land for our opponent. Teferi. Teferi is actually a bit obnoxious. Mostly because of the shutting down of our Karametra's Blessing. Gonna take up Teferi. Opponent passing. Well, play. Elsid of Life's Bounty. All right, opponent pass Ginger Brew. We get a land. Well, we gotta hope our opponent doesn't have a Wrath. If we get Wrath here, it's really bad. Um, Core Spirit Dancer. Go. Yeah. Well, all right, all right, all right. No Wrath, no Wrath. Yes, Teferi's definitely a big hassle. I think our deck is really good against control, or at least good against control, if we can cast things at instant speed. If we can't cast things at instant speed because there's a Teferi, it becomes much, much harder. Opponent, another land. All right, gonna bounce with Teferi to draw a card. Batter Skull, sure. Well, we get to untap, play Core Spirit Dancer, play Hyena Umbra, draw a card. And yeah, we'll just pass. Leave up the Elsid. So now we have multiple layers of protection for Spirit Dancer, which is nice. Elsid can stop some removal, and Hyena Umbra stops other removal. See if our opponent goes for the sword play. We know one of their... Okay, so they have two cards in hand. One of them is Sword of Feast and Famine that they got from that Stone Forge forever ago. All right, there's a Sword of Feast and Famine. Opponent equips it. Oh, I think we chump. I think we chump the way we get punished. Yeah, we're going to chump. The way we get punished is if our opponent's last card is another path. But I don't really want our opponent to untap all their lands. I guess we could have sacked. I guess we should have since there's Teferi out. That's a, that's a punt. A small punt. Just to keep our opponent from gaining the life. Opponent, undeps. Well, we will play Elsid. Play Ethereal Armor. Draw a card. Go to combat. Attack Teferi. All right, opponent lets Teferi go, which is good. That's very good. Okay, pass the turn. That's perfect. So now we can actually use our Karametra's Blessing. And now I actually like where we're at quite a bit. Mystic Sanctuary. Gonna get back the path. All right, so opponent's gonna try to do land shenanigans. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if it works. Thankfully, we have the Karametra's Blessing. We would rather not have to give protection from white, but because that'll make our stuff fall off, which is annoying, but we'll see. Opponent. Path. Well, we will. Karametra's Blessing. Fizzle the path. Opponent. Gonna get in. This time we're just gonna take it. Yeah, sure. Opponent gains some life. We'll discard the Elsid. Opponent gets to untap their lands. Eh, only one card in hand, and it's just a land, although it can get back. Hmm. Well, play Sram. Play All That Glitters on Sram. Draw two. Castle Art and Veil. Vale. Tag our opponent. All right, gonna make a 1-1. One, one. So we really just need any aura. If we can just draw any aura, then we're in pretty good shape. Opponent blocks. Yeah. So they can use Misty to get back, to get another Mystical Dispute. Ugh, mystical Dispute. And get back Path again. Yeah, Fetch Lands being Mystical Tutor is pretty powerful. Yeah, so Path again. Opponent untaps. So yeah, we're just gonna need to draw any aura. Well, we will Elsid. Unfortunately, this loses our auras, but protection from white. So we get to keep our spirit answer, but we lose both auras. All right, any aura. Any single aura so we can start drawing cards. And then we just put this away pretty quickly. Opponent gets it, hits us. Sure, sure, sure. Gain some life, whatever. All right, come on, deck. Come on, deck. Any, any aura. Don't even care which one. Discard the planes. Opponent gets on tap. They might field of ruin our Ardenvale. Not yet. 
Aura? Land. Hmm. Well, play Core Spirit Dancer. Ugh, play the land, pass the turn. All right, well, this is what we got until we draw. Once we draw an aura, things go insane. The problem is our opponent could draw Wrath, and if our opponent draws a Wrath before we draw an aura, things uh, get a lot worse. Yeah, opponent's going to eat our dual land, or our Kessler and Veil. Well, can we draw an aura? Can we draw an aura? Any single one will do. Opponent makes a token, because why not? Well, let's see what the draw is. Opponent. Combat, gonna get in and hit us. We will take it down to three. Yup. Well, this is a turn where we need to draw an aura. Untap, and that's an aura. All right, so, ethereal armor, draw three. That's what we were looking for. That's what we needed. Now that we're drawing three, hopefully we can't whiff. Oh man, please no. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. Whoa. Whoa, 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 that is. Ridiculously unlucky. All right, we will pass the turn. Wow. <laughs> that is... That is a... That is against odds. Hmm. Okay, that's unfortunate. Opponent gets to draw some cards. So opponent's still running well. Gets to make a token. Yeah, that is a... That is... Gonna lose the game. Almost 100%. Wow, I wonder what the odds of that are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we had 11 lands in our deck out of 36 cards. Probably gonna have to pull out the calculator. Opponent, Stoneforge. Well, if our opponent could get a protection from White Sword, then we just lose. Uh, all right, nothing to find. One card in hand. Opponent goes to combat. No attacks. We draw. Well, all right, Griff Spoon. Play Griff Spoon. This better not happen again. Draw three cards. Um, okay. All that glitters? Draw three cards? And opponent scoops it up! Woo! We whiffed, but we still got the job done. All right, that was... That was good. That was impressive. We whiffed really hard on our <laughs> first draw three, but we still got there. All right, so against this deck, we want the Karametra's Blessing. I think we want the other on Thin Ice. Uh, we can go down the Cartouches, and I think we just run it like that. So yeah, Teferi's a hard one. We can we can fight through... Ugh, no lands. We can fight through most of our opponent's stuff if we can cast up an instant speed. Well, this will keep. We will put a Karametra's Blessing, I think, to the bottom. Want to save the on Thin Ice for Stoneforge. Hollowed found for our opponent, Dept. And passes. Well, you do need to draw lands again. Yeah, that works. Play the land. Ginger Brute. Get in for one. Uh, opponent. Snow Covered Island. And there's Stoneforge. Yeah. Gets a batter skull. Sure. Now play Snow Covered Plains. I think we just on thin ice. We don't really want our opponent putting batter skull into play yet. Get rid of Stoneforge. Get in for one. And pass the turn. Misty Rainforest. And more more stone forges. So opponent is gonna get their stuff into play at some point. Opponent passing. I'll play the land. Play. So what's the disaster here? Well, play. S <sighs> I guess the disaster is our opponent untaps in wraths. Well, let's play Srom. Let's Griff Spoon Ginger Brute draw a card. Get in for two. Yeah, wrath is still what we want the least. Put it down to 16. Cracks down to 15. Hollowed Fountain Tapped. Getting a Ethereal Armor on Sram would be nice, because then we can protect it with Karametra's Blessing. That is one of the key cards against a deck like this. Opponent Combat. Hell, no Wrath that we like. Opponent Passes. I ain't gonna kill our Sram, unfortunately. Well, that means we're all on the Ginger Brute plan. Um, we will... Hyena Umbra, Hyena Umbra Ginger Brew. We will Ethereal Armor Ginger Brew. We will get in for seven. Pass the turn. Opponent gets a Batter Skull. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Opponent undeps. To Fairy. So we will Karametra's Blessing Ginger Brew. Takes up to Fairy. Gets in with Batter Skull. Yeah. Come on. Something that wins us the game. Another Ethereal Arbor. If we don't draw something that lets us have lethal, then we gotta kill Teferi. Because it bounces all this, which is bad. Come on. 
Give us the top deck. Give us the top deck. Spirit Dancer. Well, go to combat. Kill to fairy. Play another ginger brew. Pass the turn. Opponent, combat. Gets in. Well, we will block with ginger brew. Sack it. Fizzle the life gain. What you got about it? Opponent passes. Uh, well, play Spirit Dancer. Uh, opponent's got the counter. All right. Well, get in. Hit you for seven. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. If they could deal with this Ginger Brew, we're basically just out of luck. Opponent gets it. It's us. Goes up to nine. I'm afraid to go all in. Maybe we should just run it out. Opponent passes. Hmm. Go to combat attack. Opponent goes to two. Well, all right, pass the turn. Shark Typhoon for our opponent. Cycles. Well, opponent needs an answer that, man, maybe we should have just went for it. With how that played out, it feels like we should have went for it. Land. Oh, yeah, we probably should have just, probably should have just slammed it and hoped rather than try to uh, play around stuff. Flooded Strad. Island. Jace. Bounces. Opponent gets in. Gets in. Hits us. Gets in. Up to five. Well, play Ginger Brew. Play Ethereal Armor. Play Hyena Abra. Oh my god! Wow! Wow! Oh my goodness! Well, I guess if we had went for it before and our opponent had the force of negation, we weren't going to win anyway, but... Wow! I guess there's probably some arguments to be made that we could have played this differently. Four, five, six. So our opponent's going back up to nine, which means we're suddenly very far away from actually winning. Yeah. We're to three, opponent's to nine. Opponent has another Jace, and we will scoop it up. Well, we'll see if they bounce. I'm sure they will. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, all right. I feel like... I feel like I guess we should have done something differently there. Maybe we just had to be more aggressive. There were a couple of turns where if we had just run everything out, we could have put our opponent on a shorter clock. The problem is, if our opponent did have an answer, and we did see the Jaces and the counters come eventually, if our opponent did have an answer, then, uh, then we basically have no chance of recovering. Well, all right, we'll keep... So yeah, that's a tough one. That's a real tough one. I'm not sure. Now if we get to untap with this ROM, this and is sweet. We'll see. But it's also got some time considerations. They're down to nine minutes, which is probably enough to finish this game, but they're playing right on the edge of too slow to finish in time. All right, well, land and ginger brew. Get in for one. Yeah, it's kind of annoying that our opponent has so much bounce stuff, which gets around a lot of our protection. Doesn't get around Karametra's blessing, but opponent island and passes well castle iron veil go to combat get in for one hit our opponent and run out srom pass the turn flooded strand opponent passing now we will play hmm hyena umbra and ginger brew draw a card wouldn't mind just hitting another land we want to make the path as bad as possible which is why we're going on ginger brew now we do draw the land which is nice Snow Covered Plains, uh, Spirit Link Srom, draw a card. Go to combat, attack ya. Uh, actually, let's just get it with Ginger Brew. Snapcaster blocking Srom would be annoying. Opponent, down to 16. All right, well, the protection is getting there. Opponent, cracks. Snow Covered Plains, frantic inventory, that's fine. Well, now we mostly just want to keep hitting auras. Opponent, prairie stream, and... Monastery Mentor. Yeah, we actually don't have a way to kill that at the moment, which is awkward. Opponent passes. I'll play the land. Play Core Spirit Dancer. Play Ethereal Armor on Ginger Brute. Draw two. Go to combat. Get in for five. All right, opponent. Well, let's see if you can get out of this. Down to ten. Opponent untaps. Land. Opponent. Passing. I'll play Snow Covered Plains. Play Spirit Mantle on Spirit Dancer. Draw two. Ethereal Armor on Spirit Dancer. Draw two. Is there any chance our opponent's playing Settle the Wreckage? 
Is that possible? Go to combat. Okay, opponent's just going to cryptic to tap to stay alive for a turn. That's okay. That's okay. We can deal with that. So opponent staying alive-ish. Now let's play Elsid past the turn. All right. All right, all right. So opponent's got to just keep chaining stuff together at this point. We're fine with a Wrath. We beat a Wrath. We're in a pretty good position. If our opponent could keep chaining Cryptics, they might have a chance. But we're drawing a lot of cards now. And we're to the point where a single target or removal spell, like a Path, is not a huge deal because we have multiple, multiple lethal threats. Opponent, Flooded Strand. Cracks it. Down to nine. Mystical Sanctuary. All right, so it looks like our opponent's going to... They're going to get back Cryptic. Do they have, like, an Opt or something? Oh, Mystic Sanctuary is so busted. Opponent. To Fairy Hero of Dominaria. This can draw Cryptic, but they don't have the mana, and I think this should be game. Opponent. To Fairy. They might have to try to Tuck, and then we win. Tuck and Hope. Taking down the control deck? Maybe. All right, opponent. What's your plan? What's your plan? Wow, I think we're getting there. Well, we will. Elsid. Fizzle to fairy. Pro blue. And I mean, I think that should do it. Opponent. They just can't block our team? Opponent passes. We untap. We play spirit mantle. Draw two. Yeah. Yeah. And opponent scoops it up. Hoo! Whoa! We got there. We got there. This deck actually is pretty good. Karamathra's Blessing is such a huge addition to this kind of archetype and these type of matchups. We saw game one, the, the the Teferi shutting it down, but we just ground him out. We draw a ton of cards, outdrawing the control deck, fighting through the sweepers and the mystical sanctuaries. That was, uh, that was good. That was super good. Sweet, sweet. All right. <laughs> Budget magic time. We are moderning this week with... Ultra budget mono white auras, and that sounds fine. We got a SRAM. We can maybe protect it. Pona is mulliganing into Oblivion, which you never know these days. Could be assembling Trot. Wow, there are three. <laughs> Could be trying to assemble Trot. Could be unlucky. We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> three is not many cards, though. Keep going. Come on, go go for the go for the zero, the multi zero win. Well, I like. Uh, okay, I do not feel even a little bad. Opponent's probably gonna win. <laughs> not even a tiny bit of badness do I feel for our Tron opponent, who most likely is gonna have turn three. Yup. Okay. So opponent mulled the three and is gonna have Tron. This is an example of all that I dislike about old London Arena Mulligan Ruley. Uh, well, get in with our ginger brew. If there's good news, it's that our opponent is not going to have that great of a fight. They can't. If this ends with Trod, I'm going to I'm gonna lose it. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. Opponent. Expedition map. Trod assembled. Infinite mana on the ball to three. What's the follow-up? All right. Not tapping the mana. That's good. That's good news. Well, we untap, and we go as far as we can go. Castle Ardenvale. We will... Ugh. How quickly can we win? I think we just go aggro, ethereal armor, grow spirit dancer, all that glitters, grow spirit dancer, go to combat, hit ya for a ton, and pray for no Ugins. Worm coil doesn't matter. Karn, I think we can still get around. Opponent, <laughs> opponent. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, Trod. Don't do it, Trod. Please, no. Just die. Okay. So it's an Ugin, but it's not the one that immediately kills us, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Opponent. Three for something's us. Oh, play the planes. Play Sram. Play Ginger Brute. Play Griff's Boon on Ginger Brute. Draw a card. Go to combat. Hit Ugin. Hit our opponent. All right. One card in hand. How devastating could it be? Opponent untaps. Nine mana. Two cards. Another land. One card in hand. And it's a concession. Whoo! 
It is amazing that against Tron, your opponent can mulligan to three, and you cannot feel safe. <laughs> well, I guess it's Damping Sphere time. <laughs> Damping Sphere in, Karametra's Blessing in, going down Cartouches, going down uh, probably a couple Elsids we don't really need. Is there anything worse than Elsid? Eh, I don't know if it's Eldrazi Tron or not. Fast Tron aggressive mulligans makes me think traditional Tron. Six mana Ugin makes me think Eldrazi Tron. And we didn't see any eggs, but our opponent was on the mold of three. Um, yeah, let's try it like that. That's fine. Well, hopefully we draw a Damping Sphere. <laughs> the nice thing is, Damping Sphere is actually kind of annoying against our deck. Oh, we got, oh, we're keeping, we're keeping, we're keeping. The nice thing is we do have a clock. So Damping Sphere plus a clock is a decent way to hopefully beat a Tron deck. Well, Ginger Brew, get in there, hit ya. The bad news is Damping Sphere also slow. Okay, so it is Eldrazi Tron. Opponent, Mind Stone, sure. And Expedition Map, sure, sure, sure. I'll play the land, play Core Spirit Dancer. Get in with Ginger Brew. Opponent down to 18, Blast Zone. And thought not. Ooh, Ballista. All right. Ah, boo, Lista. That's annoying. That's going to deal with our Spirit Dancer, I presume. Yeah. Pigs and pigs. Sure. Well, come on, land. Hyena Umbra. Hmm. Well, we'll play Srom. Get in for one. Opponent down to 17. Tower. Well, opponent's getting close to Tron again. And passes... So opponent can blast zone. Well, let's see what we draw. All that glitters. Well, I guess we, hmm. Let's Hyena Umbra Srom. Draw a card. Go to combat, attack ya, hit ya. Down to 13 past the turn. Who? the bad news is this does clear the coast if our opponent has something massive to do a draw and they do get us. We'll see. Untaps, manas for days. Ugin will not be effed. All right, takes up Ugin, makes a door. Mm. All right, sex blast zone. Well, let's see what we draw. Well, play Griff Spoon draw card. We could really use a land. No deal. How greedy are we? Oh, all right, land please. Not a land. Uh oh. Well, go to combat. Because we didn't draw land, we have to kill the Ugin. Ooh, past the dirt. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Okay, desperate mind stone cracking. Yeah, that's okay. More mana, something huge. <laughs> this, oh, another ballista. Ugh, all right. Yeah, another ballista. Gonna kill our Sarab. Oh, opponent's not making it easy. Not at all. Pings, pings, pigs. Hits us. Well. Play Damping Sphere. Pass the turn. Opponent. Back down to a slightly more reasonable amount of mana. All right, Reality Smasher. Could really use a land. Hits us for seven. I don't play Core Spirit Dancer. Yeah, I think we might just be too slow here. We're taking seven? Yeah, I think uh, I think our opponent's got us. Yeah, all right. Um. Yeah, now we're locked under our own damping sphere, and we'll scoop it up. Well, that's... Ugh, awkward. Awkward, awkward. Gonna die with seven cards in hand, because we just did not have... Did not have the mana to dis deploy our threats, unfortunately. Well, run it like that. We know what our opponent's doing. It's Eldrazi Trod. Bring in one more removal spell. And, uh, yeah. We get to play first, which is good. Hopefully we have a reasonable hand. Yeah, all right. Reasonable enough. If we can go off with Spirit Dancer, that would be sweet. We don't have a way to stop Tron. So our goal is going to be to just kill our opponent quickly. Power Plant, opponent, Piasin. Play the land, go to combat, hit our opponent. Down to 18, and Spirit Dancer, go. Do we have Dismember? Not yet. All right, so opponent might luck into Tron here. Spatial Contortion. I'll play a land, play a Therial Armor, play all that glitters. Hit you for six. This is what we got. Down to 12. About it. Wastes. 
Expedition map. Going to set up Tron next turn. Bout it. Passes. We draw. El Cid. Oh, this means we lose, doesn't it? Mm. Well, go to combat. Hit ya. So what our opponent can do is get a blast zone. And kill our ginger brew. And then it's going to be tricky. Opponent. Expedition map. Gets blast zone as predicted. Untaps. Plays a blast zone. Well, we untap. Go to combat. Hit ya. Make our opponent sack their blast zone. Yup. Well, there goes our board. We will play Elsid. Play Damping Sphere. Pass the turn. Alright. Alright, alright. What do you got about it? Can we close it out? They have trod, but they do not have the mana. Karn, the great creator. What are they tutoring up? Skyship console flagship. Uh, we draw useless land. Hmm. And it looks to me like that does it. Wow. Wow. Of course our dreams would get crushed by... Oh, Tron. Opponent, yeah, draws a land. They get to kill our threat. They still have a Karn. Wow. Wowie, zowie, wowie, zowie. Sure. Well, it's disappointing. Takes up Karn again so they can tutor again. Well, play Core Spirit Dancer. Play Spirit Mantle. Draw a card. Oh, we can't. Oh, no. All right, well, pass the turn. So now if our opponent... Yeah, now we're done. Oh, that's so insane. Because now they can shoot it down with Sky Sovereign. So we can't... Yeah. Yeah, so this one's just over. We're just hard locked. Uh, opponent turns on Sky Sovereign. And we will scoop it up. Oh, wow, that is... That's something. Huh. All right, well, I guess you can't win them all with a $50 deck in Modern. Although, boy, that was brutal. That was brutal. I think the odds of us winning that were pretty high, but... Yeah, Tron! Doing what Tron does. Sad, sad, sad. Well, alright. On to the next. Alright. Budget magic time. We are mulliganing with... Oh, okay. Well, this hand's not exciting. This is about as unexciting as one of our hands can, uh, can possibly, possibly be. Flooded Strand Fire Bonnet. Bye, asses. Well... Land and Elsid, go. Opponent, Cracks Flood Strand. Hollowed Foul and tapped. Seacrum goes for our opponent. And Selfless Spirit. Yeah. Well, we will. Hmm. Now let's just play a land. Play Ginger Brew. Make it unblockable. And go attacking. If our opponent wants to trade with Elsid, we're fine with that. Opponent takes it down to 17. Boy, we got a slow clock, though. <laughs> no throbs, no spirit dancers, slow clock. That's not great. Uh, opponent. Geist of St. Traft. All right, that's a frighteningly fast clock. Uh, opponent gets and hits us. Sure. Down to 19. Well, let's see what we draw. All of it glitters. That does speed up the clock. We will... Hmm. Uh, so path is a concern. Is there any way we can play around it? Not very well. Like, I mean, try to leave up Elsid. I mean, I guess we can just all that glitters Ginger Brute. And do we attack this turn? I think we do not attack. So our opponent can't attack with this Geist of St. Traft. Opponent untaps. Elsid is a little awkward against uh, Path decks. Just because white is the color we usually have to name. Opponent. Land. And. Combat. And. Gets in with Zelfa Spirit. Sure. Now yeah, we take it. Down to 17. Yep. Uh, opponent. Hmm. Well, play SROM. Opponent cracks. I assume this is Collected Company. Gets a forest. Yeah. Runs out, Coco. Well, let's see what they hit. Spell Queller. And Mausoleum Wander. Yeah, those are good hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hmm, interesting. So we get our Sram Spell Quelled, but we do get to, on Thin Ice, get rid of Spell Queller, get back Sram, and so if we attack, then we get hit back for 
so much. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, let's pass and keep <laughs> keep this guy's to say draft at bay still. Now that we have a straw, I'm feeling a little better because we can start drawing cards, which is helpful. And we don't especially care about Mausoleum Wander. We're not a spell deck. We're all creatures and enchantments, so. Alright, another Mausoleum Wander. Grows the Mausoleum Wander. And Drug Skull Captain grows everything. Yeah, that's uh, that's scary. So we're taking a beating, for sure. Bonet. Wow, we're gonna go with the Geist, too? Alright, gets in for seven, so we drop to ten. Ooh, can we find a way out of this? We will see. So we drop to ten. We untap. Oh, well, Griff Spoon Elsid, draw a card. Give it flying. Ethereal Armor Elsid, draw a card. And pass the turn. So we're kind of stable unless our opponent finds removal. Removal just straight up beats us here. Like a path or like a brazen borrower. But the big light flaking Elsid can hold down the fort for the time being. Opponent combat. No attacks. Uh oh. Noble hire, sure. Ether vial, sure. Opponent passes. Well, we will play a core spirit dancer. We will Griff Spoon Spirit Dancer. Draw two. Yeah, keep on drawing. Well, pass the turn. Not having the easiest time of hitting lands. Yeah, no attacks. All right, we got to fade the removal. We got to fade the removal. Opponent untaps. Come on, no removal. No removal. Two cards in hand. One is a vial. One unknown. What's the last one? Opponent passing. Okay, that's good. We're down with that. Opponent passes. Another spirit dancer. Hmm. Well, Hyena Umbra spirit dancer. Draw two. On thin ice. Draw two. Ooh, Karametra's Blessing's good. Very good. Get rid of Drog Skull Captain. Opponent's last card. Rattle Chains to save it. All right. So opponent keeps their thing alive. We will just pass the turn. Next turn is where things become interesting. This turn we play defense. Next turn we go for closing out the game. With this Karametra's Blessing... We don't just lose to a path anymore, which is helpful. Somehow we've only drawn three lands out of 21 cards. <laughs> Normally we don't want to draw a ton of lands, but we actually wouldn't mind having some extra lands here. Opponent, ticking up, ticking up. What do you got? What do you got? Deputy of Detention. Well, Karametra's Blessing going to do its job. Goes after Ginger Brew. We will Karametra's Blessing, Ginger Brew. Fizzle it. <laughs> Opponent could have sacked a Mausoleum Wander, but you got to be confident in those scenarios. If you cast it confidently, sometimes it goes through. <laughs> we just snapped it off like we knew what we were doing, and our opponent <laughs> did not sack a Mausoleum Wander. All right. Yeah, I guess that is a one spell they can actually counter. Opponent passes. Well, we will play all that glitters. Ginger Brute. Very lethal. Land can't be blocked and we win whoo we got there we got there we got there okay uh spirits i actually don't know what our best plan is probably what we did right there we'll bring it on thin ice we will go down hmm else it's okay i mean i think we do basically what we did there try to protect our stuff do we want another blessing probably not griff's bloom does seem important um I guess the cartouches are the easiest cut. They don't really do anything. Let's go up another spirit link. Run it like that. Well, I mean, that worked. Our opponent got off to the fast start, but we were able to stabilize and, uh, and catch back up. Um, okay. Well, we'll keep this. Elsid protecting spirit dancer would be sweet. Temple garden. Untapped. Noblest of hierarchs. Bone at passes. Well, snow covered plains. Elsid. Go. Uh, opponent. Cavern of souls. On spirit. And... Alright, Night of Autumn. Well, there goes our Elsid. The real question's gonna be, does Core Spirit Dancer live? If our opponent can do this and follow it up by Path on our Spirit Dancer, then things are pretty sketchy. Well, play the land. Spirit Dancer. Go. Alright, no Path, no Path, no Path. Deputy of Attention as well. None of that. No removal. Let us untap and draw some cards with our Spirit Dancer opponent. Opponent, combat. 
hits us, we will gladly take it. Down to 17. Another hierarch. Okay. Come on, no path. No path. Ooh, just a spirit? Okay, selfless spirit. Okay, we can deal with this. We can deal with this. So opponent runs out their stuff, but we have the spirit dancer. So we get to Hyena Umbra, draw a card. Snow Covered Plains, Griff Spoon, draw a card. More lands! Hyena Umbra, draw a card. Okay, Srom for next turn, maybe. Go to combat, attack. For a bit. Don't it? <laughs> Takes it to eight. Okay! Untaps. They must be trying to Coco for like deputy detention. That's got to be what they're doing. A bonnet. Yeah, here comes Coco. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hold. Oh, okay, Supreme Phantom Spell Queller. That doesn't beat us. That doesn't beat us. That does not deal with our Spirit Dancer. I mean, it is damage coming across, but it doesn't. Opponent's going to have to block, chump block every turn. Lifelink would be good. Obviously, drawing something that, uh, that lets us win immediately, like protection from creatures, is the best. All right, down to 12. Opponent passes. More lands. Well, in that case, we will play uh, Castle Art and Veil. SROM. All that gives glitters SROM. Draw two. Yeah. Uh, Ginger Brew, okay. Go to combat. Get in with Spirit Dancer. Opponent's got a chump. They got a chump with something. Blocks and presumably sacks Selfo Spirit. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's it go. Well, pass the turn. Come on. No removal. No removal. No removal, opponents. Island. I mean, we've successfully built the Abyss. Almost two Abysses once the SROM grows. Opponent. Spiriting. It is Drog Skull Captain. Okay. And Phantasmal Image to copy Drog Skull Captain. All right. All right. All right. So our opponent has the lock. How long do we live here? Those spirits have gotten huge. This might put us to dead next turn. Yeah, opponent. Oh, oh, can we draw into the win? Attacks, attacks. Okay, this is sketchy. Lifelink would be great. That would be, that would be great. We untap. Oh, that's lifelink, that's lifelink. Can we win with ginger brew? Let's count, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, one, two, one. I think this works. One, one, two, one. Yeah, all right, so play Ginger Brew. All that glitters Ginger Brew, draw two. Land again, and El Cid. Ginger Brew, did we count correctly? Seven, snow-covered plains, spirit link, Eight power, draw two, make it unblockable, and we got there. Whoo! This deck's actually pretty good for its price, for sure. Whoa! Good game, good game, opponent! The Brute comes through, even in modern through, Million Lords, Collecting Company, Knight of Autumn. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. That was super sweet. All right, this deck's actually, this deck's actually pretty good. <laughs> I like it, I like it. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. Budget magic time. We are playing ultra budget mono white auras, and mm, 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 mm. we're gonna keep this. We do need another land. We are only at 18 land decks, so one landers will happen, but we have Ginger Brute. So we do have stuff we can do with one land, although two lands is definitely way better because then we get to get down the Spirit Dancer and go to a uh, card draw town. Uh, opponent, Sacred Foundry, untap, down to 17. And Shriek Horn. Yeah. Well, let's see what we draw. That's a land. Well, we will play Core Spirit Dancer. Get in for one. So opponent's going to need removal for the Spirit Dancer pretty quickly. Uh, opponent, all right, Mills of Dredger. Life from the Loam. That is one of the cards they're looking for. Draw Mills again. All right, they're Stinkweed, so they hit their best Dredgers. Let's see what they can do with it. Dredges into, eh, more dredging, but nothing immediately impactful. Bloodstained Mire for our opponent. Cracks it. Ooh, do they also have Cathartic Reunion? Mountain. Alright, so opponent's gonna go super dredgy here. Dredges, two Creeping Chills. Dredges, an Ox. Uh, Alright, 
Well, they're going to have stuff coming back eventually. For now, it's just two creeping chills. Good news is this means we get to uh, keep our spirit dancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when our opponent gets something back, they're going to get a lot back. Ooh, planes is good. So we get to play Spirit Link on our Spirit Dancer draw card. We get to play Spirit Mantle on our Spirit Dancer draw card. Get in, hit ya, gain seven. Pass the turn. Opponent, Mills. Is there any way we can win next turn? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh no, that doesn't. Hmm. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So if we draw into more cheap auras, thirteen. If we draw into more cheap auras, we can win next turn. And we do have some redraws. Even through our opponent having blockers. Normally, the opponent shouldn't be able to kill Spirit Dancer. Usually, Lightning Axe, five damage is where they're at. So being able to kill it would be unfortunate. Unlikely. About it. What'd you got? Is this Ox, I assume? Ox for more dredging? Yeah, there's Ox. That's going to get some prized amalgams. Going to allow our opponent to dredge like crazy. Dredges, dredges, creeping chills. All right, blood gas. So opponents went to town, that's for sure. They have mailed essentially their entire deck here on turn three. They've hit every creeping chill. Uh, this does mean it's going to be hard to win next turn. Opponent cracks. Yeah, very unlikely that we win next turn now. Gets a lad, gets the blood gas. Gets the rest of the prized amalgams. Yeah, all right. Well, opponent built the board. Here they come, here they come. So we got to deal 20? That's going to be tough. So I think we, on thin ice, draw a card. Ugh, more lands, not good. Uh, get rid of the ox. Snow-covered plains. Spirit mantle. Draw a card. Hmm. Well, play Elsid. Go to combat, get in for eight. Go up to 21, pass the turn. All right, can you kill us, opponent? Can you kill us? Opponent's gonna have to stop dredging at some point because there's not many cards left in their deck. Opponent, combat. Big attack. Well, we will just eight, nine, 10. Hmm, how can we lose? How can we lose this game? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Conflagrate, maybe? Hmm. Thing is, we technically kind of have lethal if our opponent doesn't do anything. Yeah, let's let's just chump. Yeah, let's chump a prized amalgam. I mean, we just need to draw an aura. If we draw an aura to trigger our spirit dancer, then we win. If we draw another land or a creature, then all bets are off. Opponent, looking like another ox. Probably gonna have to stop dredging though. Ox. Well, st uh, still dredging by the looks. Dredges. Okay, opponent's just drawing this time. That makes sense. Down to seven cards. Play as a land. Come on, any aura. Any aura. It's a land. Hmm. Well, get in. Hit our opponent with Ginger Brute. Stay on defense past the turn. Ooh. Opponent. Haggles. Draws discards. I mean, I think we're kind of okay. This is actually crazy. Our opponent has literally dredged their entire deck. Like, to the point where they're not dredging anymore, because they've dredged everything. And we're beating them? Opponent. And we've flooded out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've drawn seven lands in our 18 land deck. And we're still, like, our opponent dredged their entire deck! We've drawn seven lands, and we're still winning this game easily. Eight lands make it. Well, we will play the land. We will make Ginger Brute unblockable. We will go to combat. Attack, attack. And then... Karametra's Blessing? Lethal? Exaxes? Well, good try, Dredge. <laughs> Apparently you can't keep up with an ultra-budget... <laughs> or a deck. Even if you dredge literally your entire deck. <laughs> that is not a... Not a super great side for Dredge. <laughs> Alright, so Cart Cartouche is out. Oh, poor Dredge. Cartouche is out. Um, we'll go down. On thin ice, on thin ice. We'll go up another spirit leg to go along with the Tormod script. And anything else? Hmm. I would like one more. And let's go down to Hyena Umbra for a spirit link. I feel like the spirit links are actually pretty good. If we can build a big thing, like a spirit dancer, I feel like... We can just race our opponent 
if we can uh, give it pseudo lifelink. Uh, well, that was that was good. <laughs> it's actually kind of hilarious that our opponent would would dredge their entire deck and not be able to win. <laughs> Maybe we're just really good against dredge. Um, well, this we can't keep. One of the rules of our deck is if you don't have a creature, you can't keep it. We have what fifteen creatures, so the odds of drawing one are not that bad, but I still think it's too risky. Uh, all right, this will keep. Although the bad news is we don't really have a way to protect this Spirit Dancer, so if our opponent can kill it on sight... Yeah, all right, there's Ginger Brew. If our opponent can kill it on sight, things could uh, go poorly. Once we can grow it outside of the range of our opponent's removal, then it just wins us the game. Blood Grip for our opponent. Tapped. Untaps. Bloodstained Mire cracks it. Well, here comes Cathartic Reunion, I assume. Simon Grounds. And, yeah, here comes the Dredgen. Discards, couple thugs, dredges, dredges, dredges. Well, nothing that immediately kills us. Now play the land, play Elsid. Get in with Ginger Brew. I think we're going to try to play it a little safe with this core spirit dancer rather than running it into like a lightning axe. Bonnet, dredges. All right, so they're going to get what? A prized amalgam, two prized amalgams. And a Bloodgast. Looms back some lands. Yeah. Gets back Bloody Ass. Gets back Prize to Malgubs. Oh, drawing a land would be sweet. Pony gets a mountain. Haggles. Dredges. Hits another Prize to Malgub. Alright, so opponents managed to build a board, that's for sure. Yup. Come on, land. Pony passes. Gets back a bunch of Prize to We draw. Hmm. Well, in that case, we will Ethereal Armor Ginger Brew, Tormod's Crypt, Spirit Link, Attack Attack, hit you to 9, go up to 24 past the turn, or hit you to 8, about it. Well, there's a Conflagrate. Hmm, yeah, it could beat us. That was a good, uh, a good dredge. Oh, alright, opponent plays a land. Well, we will Tormod's Crypt. Get rid of the Conflagrate, and the blood gas and everything else. Do you have removal? Opponent gets in for a bunch. We take 11, down to 14. And opponent needs to be able to kill Ginger Brew. That's step one for our opponent. All right, more Cathartic Reunions. More Dredgen. Ooh, Blast Zone. Blast Zone's a concern. Dredges, Dredges. Yeah, they can loam back the Blast Zone? Thought sees interesting. Opponent passes. Well, play the Snow Covered Plains. Go to combat. Attack you. Hit ya. Gain some life. Spirit Dancer. Pass the turn. The downside is none of our stuff is actually evasive at the moment. Opponent's down to eight cards in their deck. So, dredging, probably over with. Plays a land. Gets a Bloodgast. Sure. I mean, I guess Ginger Brute is evasive, but if we lose Ginger Brute, none of our creatures are evasive. Opponent combat. Big attack. Hmm. We will block with Spirit Dancer. Drop to 10. Yeah, we're just all in on Ginger Brew. With protection from Elsid. Alright. Well, um, all that glitters. Ginger Brew. Unblockable. Uh, attack. And... And? About it. Who? Oh! <laughs> All right, opponent dredge their deck, still could not win. Apparently, we're really good against dredge. Well, if you're tired of losing to dredge, and you don't want to spend a lot of money, <laughs> apparently our deck just crushes it, because our opponent's been, like, consistently... We've played dredge twice, uh, and our opponent has been milling their entire deck, like, dredging their entire deck consistently, and still not even close to enough. Well, <laughs> okay, sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about mono-white auras in modern and the deck actually worked really well we did lose to eldrazi trod in a really close match otherwise though we beat the control deck we beat dredge trice apparently we're like the dredge assassins we also took down spirits in a really interesting close match so the deck actually felt surprisingly competitive and we were able to beat like combo we were able to beat control we were able to beat like mid-rangey aggro decks like spirits so the deck felt pretty competitive against the metagame at large the combination of 
potentially having a really fast clock. We can get some, I don't think we get turn three wins very easily, but we can definitely get some turn four wins where we just like play a Spirit Dancer, put a bunch of stuff on it, give it evasion, kill our opponent in one massive attack, or same with Ginger Brew. So we can get these fast wins. We also have this absurd ability to go long. Because of Spirit Dancer and Srom, eventually we stack up a couple of those because Spirit Dancer, of course, is not legendary. So we can have multiples of those, plus we have Srom as well. So eventually we get to the point where every one mana aura we're casting is like drawing us two cards, drawing us three cards, and then we just outdraw basically anyone. Sure, kill our stuff, whatever. We're going to have more stuff to replace it with. We're going to have more auras. We're going to have more creatures. We're going to have more card draw. So we can get the fast wins. We can get the go long wins. We have a pretty good sideboard plan for most matchups all around. The deck actually feels fairly competitive. I think the one place where it could be a little rough is just like the fastest combo decks. You could kind of think of our deck as a combo deck. Our combo is making a huge creature with auras and also drawing a ton of cards. But our combo is essentially making one massive threat and using it to win. If our opponent is playing Grishel Brand or a really fast Storm Draw, something where they can win on turn three, our turn four wins probably going to be too slow. So that's probably the weakness. Although it is worth pointing out, we're in white, and white is one of the best colors. Sideboard-wise, for fighting against combo decks, we don't have a lot of the best options in our sideboard because we're a budget deck, but you have a lot of good options there, so we definitely could fix those issues if we need to, but all around, for $61, the deck feels really strong, and it feels like you can win a lot of games, so if you're looking for something that's super cheap and seemingly pretty competitive in modern... Seems like a good option. So that's my mono white auras. That's better budget magic for this week. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.